My name is Joyce Tahab Kiavua. Currently, I'm the chair of the Sisters Union, and I'm happy to be the person who is leading sisters to take them to the next level. Yes, thank you. So, and today being the day that we have a seminar on parenting, what do you expect during that seminar? What do you expect to learn? Okay, parenting first, it's a complicated uh, a topic and um, also it is something that you do that no one else has done it so perfectly. So today I'm expecting to learn about different approaches of uh, parenting and even uh, different parenting styles and I'm open and ready to learn so I'm anxiously waiting for a speaker so that she will equip us with the necessary wisdom and knowledge to be able to transform our teenagers and even the small children in our congregation thank you my name is Ori Jerigure and I'm a a member in this congregation, South Sea, and I'm a parent, and I would like to share about that topic, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, and what do you expect to learn today? Uh, today it's a nice day, and we as parents, we have waiting for it because we know that we have something to understand and to run. And as a parent, I know I have been parenting, but many of the times we may find ourselves in a certain that we know. But it is good to hear from others so that we can understand and know many things. Thank you.
have not been done, you start asking the house girl, is there, you know, do we have everything for tomorrow morning instead of being interested in your child. The second reason you need to be present and to spend quality time with them is to do your job. And your job, as we have said with the other group, is to love them. And we have also said in this group, to love them no matter what, even if. The third reason you need to be present is to mirror behavior. Have you ever heard in life, life is caught is not taught. That is why you keep shouting, shower, shower, then no one showers until you take the another action. <laughs> eh? So until you shout and yell, nobody goes to shower. <laughs> because maybe you are also the type of mother that doesn't have a schedule in your house. So why do you want your children to have a schedule? If you are a stay-at-home mom, then when you wake up in the morning, you don't shower, you don't dress up, you're still in the night dress up to 5 p.m. So children go to school and they come back, you're still in the night dress. They saw you with it last night. And then you're saying, oh, you guys, you have been in school the whole day, you need to shower. 
they have never seen you showering. You won't usually go to shower after you have put them to bed. Not that you don't shower, but usually shower after you have put them to bed. So they actually don't know when you shower. But if they know, even mom when it is five, she enters a bathroom and showers. If your children grow to be pretty where they shower themselves, they will also shower, they will have a shendu. Because it's not about how much you shout. It's about how much you mirror. Now, if your children hear you talking on phone to your friends and saying, hey, Atasi Jeff, you are now home, then you're telling your friend, I've not yet arrived home, uh, let me get uh, home, because I'm still trying to catch a matatu, and TV is on, so they're hearing some noise. So once I get home, I'll let you know. And your child looks at you like, Zilaza, Mom, are you serious? Who are you talking to? And well, you keep quiet, so you tell them, hey, that was my friend. Don't get into one dot matters. So the next time your child lies in your presence, should you be shocked? They have heard you lying. You're not in a matatu in the house and you're telling someone you're in a matatu. Are we together? So life is caught more often than it is taught. That is why if I ask you what is the most important thing that you remember happened in your life or you have ever learned or known, are you likely to start telling me the biology notes you were taught in high school? You will tell me your experiences. Something that really happened and aroused your emotions is what you remember up to today. Not what the teacher taught you. Eh? The notes you wrote. Those ones you forgot 90% of them. You only remember the 10% that you apply in your day-to-day -day life. We need to be present to our children and spend quality time with them because we just need to be there. We just need to be. We mimic God. How often is God present in your life? So why don't you want to be present always in your home? You know some of us, because our children cry a lot like mine when they are young, so you dress and you have organized with your house girl, like when you hear me opening the bedroom, rush up if you have a house that has upstairs or another room. Enter the bedroom with the baby so that she doesn't cry when I'm going out. So your child is always hidden from you. So when you're going to job, the child is rushed into the bedroom so that you can walk with your heart bag without breaking your legs because you're in high heels. Then when you come in the evening, you tell her, when you hear me knocking, please quickly hide the baby again so that I enter my bedroom, I have a rest. So you shower, you have a nap, then you tell her, that when the child sleeps, flash me. I come out. You are fearing your child. You are threatened. Mothers with babies, by the way, it's a real threat, I know. Because like me, I have babies who cry until the first one when I came out of hospital cried. I called my mom, I told her, the baby has been crying like for two, three hours. What is the issue? I've changed, I've breastfed, nothing is working. She has told me, relax. <laughs> that was you when you were her baby. Welcome to the world of parenting. So the baby cried, we would never sleep through the night. So we figured out how to do a schedule. Because if my house help doesn't sleep, I don't sleep, everyone doesn't sleep, we'll be all fatigued. So even my husband was in the schedule. So you, you're staying with the baby from 8 to 12, the mother sleeps. 12, the mother wakes up. The house girl, stay with the baby 12 to 3. Okay? Yeah. Then the next person on the rotor. We used to do it like that. But you cannot always run away from your baby however much they cry. Because like God, you need to be present, not only when there are problems, even when there are nice moments. And that way, they board with you, they know you. Because what are we trying to do? We are trying to cultivate relationships. And I'll give you some three strategies very quickly. They were meant for teens, but uh, the moms with teens, but they work for everybody. The next one, I want us to use the onion analogy. You know that onion, the red onion, eh? Don't even look at the slide anymore because I'll send you the notes. The child, your daughter, your son, they are a whole complicated person just like you and me. You know, the Bible says God made us simple, but we made ourselves complicated. They have the outer things you can see. They have the inner things that you cannot see. Just like the onion. The outer peel, you can see and even peel it off because you don't want to cut it. It's a bit dry. You don't want to mix it into your food. 
Then when you peel it off and you start cutting, what do you see in the inside? The rayas get deeper and they're even becoming smaller. If you are looking at the circular thing, yeah? they're even becoming smaller. The core of the onion, like if you were to plant it and for it to grow into a new crop, would be the inside part. The person you are trying to bring out is not the physical one you can see. That you are happy because you assess your child physically, so you see they are jumping, they are okay. But there is so much in the inside that you can't know unless you cut and open up. How do you cut and open up a child's heart? It is by spending time with them. Don't say they are big, they don't need me, they are on the TV. Some of us have delegated parenting to TV. And I've done television, media, journalism up to PhD level. One of the things we say, and I can't have time to tell you now, if your child is below five years, by the way, switch off the TV in your house. If you have to put it on, let it just be one hour at most in a day. Give clear instructions to your house self that I want the TV off throughout the day. It will be switched on when I am home. Do not delegate parenting to your TV because we have many children nowadays who don't even learn how to speak even when they are three years. They can't talk. You know, like there are so many cartoons. You think they are watching cartoons that will teach them language. I don't have time to explain, but there is a video. Maybe I'll send it to your pastor lady here to see. How when the, the cartoons destroy the brains of your child? Because the cartoon world is not real. It is so instantaneous. Have you ever seen cartoons like going to the farm? They grow food, if it's maize or apples, they mature the same day, they are harvested the same day, they are taken to the house and people eat. Eh? In real life, is that what happens? How long does an apple tree take to grow? Not two years. All three. Isn't it? Life is not instantaneous. So when your child has been watching cartoons and then they go to kindergarten and they are given homework and they can't do, it's because they thought in the cartoons when you write. My son actually asked me that the other day because we gave him this thing for drawing. So he asked me, how come it's so hard? I have to take a lot of time to draw. And in the cartoon, I just see them doing shh. Very true. So we have children right now who are even in the universities, they can't finish assignments because they thought life is instantaneous. They are mind, the cartoon world. The movie world is instantaneous, but the real world, it's not what? Many children have graduated and they are resigning from one job to the other because they are trying to figure out things will be good like I see in the TV. When I get a job, I earn money, I buy a car, I get a good house. Then they realize even the first salary is not enough, even for fair. You're trying to divide the money for fair, for nice clothes, for salon, for what? It's not enough. So they resign and go to look for another bigger job. They realize in the bigger job, it takes a lot of time and energy. So please, do not let the TV parent your child. Spend time with them, know the emotions, know the personality of your child, because all children are different. They are not children who are the same, even if they are born from the same mother, same father. I don't know if you have seen one of your children is very quiet, the other one is hyperactive. Another one might be the one that gets annoyed very fast because that's the emotional makeup. Another one, even if you can them, they don't even cry. Children are different. And how can you know their differences so that you mentor them into the people they are supposed to be? Is by spending quality time with them. Number two, be positive and accept your child unconditionally. And then finally, be the source of authority. But now for this group, there is something I had organized. I will try to go through that very quickly. Can we go to that part of session two? Session two, please. Parenting in today's world. Parenting in today's world. And you go to the next slide. In today's world, what are the main things? What are some of the characteristics in today's world? I brought four on board to just try and condense them. In today's world, there is greater digitization than before. True or false? There are phones, there are devices, there is information, network, TV, channels, and radio, and everything are so many, isn't it? We are all connected, eh? Today, I came driving using Google Maps because this was my first day to come here. You have a very beautiful sanctuary. We bless the Lord. This is so pretty. Pastor Lisa, this is so nice. Eh? It's so wonderful and amazing. But now, I didn't have to keep calling her, asking her, hey, when I reach here, how do I turn? I just used the technology, and I found myself here. So there is greater connectivity. 
So I tell parents when they are parenting, some parents like you, here might be, maybe you have set a rule in your house. Like, don't get out of the gate without my permission. And you are happy that your children are indoors. But are you checking what they are doing indoors with those devices? Let me tell you, this year alone, I have counseled three teenagers, two teenagers and one preteen. A child in grade five is a preteen. Eh? And then one in form two, another one in form four, because they were watching pornography and they had become addicted. And you know what? The parents were so happy that my child is so good, never goes out, doesn't have bad company. But they are on Facebook and they have 2,000 friends. Instagram, they have 1,500 friends who send videos daily. Do you think they know all those people physically? Do you even know them? Because what as their, their young minds tell them, if anyone asks you to be your friend on Facebook, just say, yes, accept, accept, accept. The more friends you have, the more you become a celeb. These days, children want to have, to become what? Celebs. Then, you, if you have a talent like singing or art, draw or sing and post online. When you go to the salon, take a photo and post. So they are on Instagram and they love it. But we know very well in this one, we have evil people. Now someone, we have evil people. So there are those who are on Instagram because they want to ensure children are watching pornography because they deal with pornography. They even want to uh, do kidnapping and go shoot videos with your young, innocent daughter of porn. And they will get them. You have seen in news that sometimes the police have done round up in some houses and the 200 or some 50 or so high school girls have been caught doing sex orgies and drugs and so many funny things and you're wondering where were their parents, isn't it? The world is connected. Don't be happy when your children are indoors. You need to spend time with them and know, what are you doing online? Check those devices, you're the one who bought them. Which are your favorite websites? And don't I just say, ah, mine likes cooking, so she watches how to cook. Mine likes football, so he's always watching football. Because what happens when, you know, there, there are some things we, I will not be able to tell you, but uh, when uh, the app realizes this, is a, this somebody likes football, and they also want to sell porn, things will start popping up. So they will click one day when they see a naked person, then that is how they will be inducted into pornography. Very bad, isn't it? Sometimes in parenting, we have to be extra careful. Because of what we call as the current, the other trade in the current world is increasing demands. We have a lot of economic pressure, social expectations, you are always so busy. So you have no time for your children. Then you are in so many chamas, you have to do social networks and all that. And you even host people so frequently in your house. And when the people come like here now, we don't want children here because we think they are disturbing us. By the way, if a child is not making noise and they are coming here, just leave them, eh? There's no problem, eh? But if they are distracting me as the speaker, it's okay, you can take them away. Because when you have friends in your house, what do you tell children? Go to the bedroom if you, are, you live in a small estate, eh? So that the adults can sit in the table room and talk, eh? Serious matters, eh? Now, when they try to come out to tell you something, you do... Like you, when they see that jicho like that, they know, her. Hey, I would rather go back. Now, let me tell you what happened to one of my friends very close. So they hand a chama and they meet like every month, they go to somebody's house like that, rotation. Eh? And they have done that for several years. So they know each other very well. So this one couple has a boy, that time when it happened was nine years, and the other one, 11 years. And they are several other girls. So they are not worried because these children have grown up together. So they would always say, watoto, bedroom. Because we are trying to see how we can do business. Eh? <laughs> so what happened? And then to make them silent, some of the parents give them their phones. That you can go play a game, isn't it? So there is this boy, he was given the phone by the dad and they are in a meeting. This, you know, some parents watch also funny things. Or you're in a group that sends funny, maybe alumni in a school, you and a crazy person in your class who sends funny videos like of sex. Eh? So there's a guy who, who, who had sent a pornography video in one of the WhatsApp groups, and then it pops up because he had put notification alert. So the child hey, saw something and then watched, then told all his friends, hey, come, 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 
Let's see what is this. You guys see. So they watched the whole clip. That was day one. And then one of the one who was 11 said, True, this is dangerous. Never tell your parents you have watched this. So every other time they met, they would watch porn and porn. Then those ones of even uh, homosexuality came up. Let me tell you what happened one year down the line. The house girl accidentally went into the bedroom one day. See, the parents are in the sitting room. In the bedroom are the children, found the children having sex. So she came out and called the mother. When it's the house girl, because she's preparing tea and other things for the guests, you answer. So she told the mother, go to that bedroom, see what the children are doing. I won't even tell you. She went and she fainted. She couldn't believe. She called all the other adults. And then they started asking, for how long have you guys been doing this? We've been doing this since last year. <sighs> what? When they went for counseling, it was another whole story. So please, spend time with your child. In spite of the business that you want to start with your child, in spite of the pressure that you have to take them to a better school, check what they are doing. Don't just say they are watching, they are playing games, those devices. The environments are dynamic. Things are changing, including school curriculum. We have a lot of pressure on all sides. The boundaries have become so unstable. So right now you can't say my children are safe at home. At home, you have 2,000 people through Facebook that you don't know. Isn't it? You have subscribed to DSTV or Go TV or any other. And all the programs, you have no time to censor and check which ones can be watched. So you need to do two things for you to survive through this. Four things, I don't know whether I have time for four, let me do one. For you to parent successfully, you need to engage in what we call family education. Navigating effectively as a mother. Because motherhood is one of the most demanding jobs in the world, but it can never be neglected. I wish I didn't feel, I'm feeling a bit of pressure, so I have no time to build that case. But what I want to say, you and me, we know. And very successful people like Abraham Lincoln, who became the first president of the U.S., he said that the greatest influence in my life has been the lessons I learned from my mom. Some of us remember it is your mom, the way you, sh you, you saw her waking up and working so hard, who makes you feel that you have to do the same for your children, through all force. So there is a lot of uh, you know, expectation from you as a mother, even from yourself, not just from society. And successful parenting or mothering is built on strong effort and dedication. And that dedication and effort cannot be complete without your presence in the lives of your children. Never delegate parenting. Delegate every other duty in your house. Delegate the cleaning and the emptying and everything. But not your children. Be there for them. And I want us to look at four strategies. The first one is what I call family education. Now, family education, what is it? It is good. If you go to the next slide, it is good that children learn everything positive from their parents. And better if they perfect that. That is one, what one of the scholars has said. A peaceful family setting strongly influences how children perform in school. If there is peace within your home, you need to instill a positive mental attitude in your children. So as you do your parenting, whether it is at infancy stage, at the young stage, because there are various stages of life that children go through, you need to impact very positive attitudes in them. And you need to do what we call holistic education. Educate them on how they need to think. For example, help your children to think positively. How do you do that? By making sure that you're also more positive than not negative in your life. You know, it, what is the, the most obvious answer when our children ask for anything? Can I do this? You say, no. Can I go out? No. In fact, when, uh, children will always tell you, if you ask your mother, they will just say, she will say, no. What do we say? No. So our children, you know, no is negative. Yes is positive. I'm not telling you to say yes. Because definitely there are so many things you can't say yes to. But do you know you can transform a no to a yes in a wise manner? For example, if a big child who is like uh, 
12 asks you, can I drive Dan Star? You tell them, yes, when you're 18, you'll get your driving license. You have to say no. You know, you said no because you know they are children. They are not yet 18. They have no driving license and they can cause accidents. And we have seen children trying cars out and they have, like in Kayole sometime, a child killed another one in the estate by trying to drive their father's car. So you say no, but you don't have to say, you say yes, when you are 18, you'll drive. And you say with a smile. Can I go out? You'll say yes, you'll go out at 5 p.m. It's now 10 a.m. Do your homework. Are we together? So can we practice how to do what you call positive parenting? So that your children are not seeing you as a barrier. Because if you're used to saying no, whether they are preteens or toddlers or teenagers, they will feel they don't want you. You know, no one likes somebody who says no every time. You like people who keep telling you no. If you ask your boss, can I go and leave tomorrow? No. Can I go next month? No. You hate them. Eh? <laughs> so why do you expect your children to love you when you're always saying no? So practice how to say yes. But yes doesn't mean you're giving permission. Can I go to my friend's house? Yes. When you close school in April, you will go to your friend's house. I will also accompany you there. Is it still a no? It's a no, but a yes, isn't it? Yes. So let us practice what we call positive parenting. And at the end of the day, we shall have better children. The family, of course, is a very key in, uh, agent in the development of what we call self-esteem. Children who have grown up being told no, 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 they also have some phobia even to speak to their teachers, isn't it? Because they think the teacher will be the same as their parents and will say no. So when they have an issue even in class, even asking or answering questions, their self-esteem has been tampered with. So when you practice what you call positive parenting, and I will give you some links to go and look out on how to do positive parenting, how to say yes more often, even when you are not giving permission, you will get children that have a stronger self-esteem. Then number two, build an enabling environment. If you want your parenting to be successful, at the end of the day, you want to bring out very successful, mature uh, adults to this world. Who will be the CEOs of the next companies, you know, who will be the politicians that will bring positive change in our country, create an enabling environment. And an enabling environment is one we say is a psychologically positive climate. And you do this without going through the notes by doing three things. Children are looking for three things from their mothers. One, acceptance. If a child feels like you don't accept them, they will be very discouraged in their journey of life. Then they are looking for affirmation. They want to be affirmed in the positive things. So we usually say, catch your children when they are doing right, not when they are doing wrong. How many of you have a tendency of catching your children when they are doing wrong? Throughout, you're always asking. Just, you know, I have also assessed myself. I went for counseling in 2019. I did a course and I really assessed myself. And I realized most of the time I was saying, so I was catching them. Those who understand Kiswahili, please keep on. I was always looking, catching them doing wrong. Then I would always only point out the negative things. You know, you see the negative things. But we are told if you want to affirm people and to help them be healthy psychologically, catch them when they are doing good. Go that day when they have spread their bend without you telling them and say, wow, this is good. When you are a four-year-old girl wants to start dressing herself, don't tell her no. She wants to choose the clothes to wear. But you think you know better because your house girl knows better. Give her a chance to choose and tell her, wow, I like that. You want to wear the pink dress? That's okay. But I was thinking you wear this one tomorrow when you are going to Kinairiana's house. Today, because we are going to the shop, why don't you wear the jeans trouser? Have you affirmed that girl? Of, oh, yeah, mom, let me wear the jeans. You see? Then tomorrow you are going for the party, I wear the pink dress. But the, both, uh, the first thing you have done, you have affirmed them. So the next week they will now want to choose. And with the time now, you are giving them some control. So very soon you will stop worrying about choosing clothes for everybody before you go to church and you always get late. So you feel shy to greet Pastor Lisa here because... You know? 
Because, and you're saying, there's nothing I would have done. I have two children. I have three. I have four. I have to wash them. My house girl is on leave, on off on Sundays. I have to cook breakfast. My husband wanted, after he cooked this, he said he wants sex. I don't want a divorce. Even pastor knows. So I don't want crisis. So you have so many. And then you're choosing clothes for a seven-year-old girl or boy, and they can choose. Because you have decided to take control and not to affirm them when they want them to choose. If you kept telling them, Apana, I'm the one who is saying what you're wearing. Yeah, they will be, never take initiative again, isn't it? So catch them when they are doing good things and affirm them. Then the third thing you do is show affection. Unconditional love. That is when your child has messed up and has broken the flask. Depending on the age, like if it is a two-year-old to four-year-old, do you really have to spank and quarrel a two-year-old who has broken the flask? I think you need to deal with the person who put the flask on the wrong end, near the end of the, the, end of the table. Isn't it? You expect a child of that age to know that the flask cannot, and then you are calling say, do you know how much I bought this? They don't even know and they can't know. A 10 shillings to them is not different from 1 million. They have no clue of money. So save your energy, mom, and relax. Just hold their hand and tell them, have you seen what has happened to the flask? Can we try and put it together? You try, then it can't be put together. Tell them, these things, when they fall, they break, and that's it. Let's go and bury our flask, and we are so sad. And we go to the dustbin, we bury the flask. Now that child, next time when they are near our flask, they say, oh no, it was so sad, I don't want to bury another flask, mom. So they keep distance. So you save your money. But if you yelled and screamed, they will just be knowing. And they are used to you yelling. Let me tell you something at this point. Children, by the way, when you yell, they don't get scared. That's why they never run away. Whether they are teenagers, they are used to, and I will send you a video on how to stop yelling and screaming. Because when you yell, they, do, they know you are just fine. That's mom. And teenagers even when been discussing you, God, you're too utter cool. Ah, she'll cool down. And you are yelling, you are thinking you are threatening. Even the whole estate will come to see what has happened in your house. Relax. Just talk peacefully, calmly, and tell them, you guys, let's have a meeting. Uh, do you like how our house looks like now? They will look around and say, no, okay. Can we describe what is not making you happy? And they tell you socks are on the table. Cups for breakfast are here and it's now 5 p.m. What else? The room is stinking. The windows are not open. No fresh air. Okay. Then you tell them, what can we do better to make this room better? Let's go to action. Put it in order. Next time, they'll always be remembering what's not right with this room procedure. But when you yelled and screamed, and then you say, I want that room clean in two seconds, they will start figuring out, and they see two seconds cannot clean this room. So they will sneak out through the other door, go to play outside. You come back from your bedroom thinking the room is clean, you're like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. these kids, these children, I need the pastor's number right now. Hey, this church is not even teaching us children programs that are good. Pastor, we need a class for... It's not about the pastor. It's you and your attitude and your parenting skills. You know, I went... One day I was very unhappy and I went to my... My boy was and just joined nursery school. Uh, so I went... And then the teacher wrote a note in the diary that your child sleeps every day in class has not yet known how to count one up to ten. So I went, I said, I've paid a lot of school fees. Why are you writing my child? You are the one who's supposed to teach. What are you trying to tell me? So I went, I entered the class. It was the time in the morning when parents drop children in class. Mine had already gone by bus. So I walked. So I went and then what I found in that class, the teacher saw me and uh, she didn't like um, try to recognize me so well. So I was already putting another thing on my list on that this teacher even doesn't recognize parents. Okay, so I waited. But I realized what I saw there, there were 60 children in that class. By the way, I transferred my child from that school because I could have found another school like within the next term. There were 60 children, like 20 and arrived. Eh? Then I realized she didn't have an assistant teacher. In one corner, two children were fighting. 
One was like, you know, fighting another. And she was trying to say, Sijui, eh, don't scratch us. Stop, please don't fight. And she wasn't shouting. Then in another corner, there is one who was susuing and the other one was screaming, she has susued on herself, teacher. Okay. Hey. Then the teacher, then on the table for the teacher, there were two who were trying to ask, how do I draw, how do I paint? So she was trying to finish up with this. She didn't even get scared at Ikuna Mwenya Meji Susulia. She just continued and showed this how to paint. And I'm waiting there. Then I saw another mother come and throw the child in class. And the child was screaming. Saying, hey, I don't want to be left. Screaming. Then the mother was trying to play hide and seek. You know the way you go to the door. Then you want to release your skirt. Then you close the door quickly and run away. <sighs> so I stood there and after like 10 minutes... I just said, Mwalimu, how are you? Oh. I, I felt mercy and empathy. And two in my, those who came earlier, you know, I told you, I got a baby. Within 11 months, baby two came. I don't think I got babies. But they came through the natural ways of getting babies. But I had babies within a span of 11 months. I couldn't believe. So in my house, I even took this one to kindergarten when he was two years and seven. Because I had them in one year. And I was getting mad. You know, literally, like I'm blowing out. And I have a scholarship to do a master's degree. And if I don't go for it, there is no more scholarship. And I am newly married. I'm also trying to understand the psychology of men. That he is thinking I can serve him tea. I'm going to work. I have a baby. I have homework from the teacher. And he is just there saying, I can't wear this shirt. I want the blue one. It's not iron. So I'm trying to figure out how is all this happening. So when I got to this class, I saw this teacher and I was saying, I can't manage two babies in my house. How are you managing 20 and you're not screaming? And I was like yelling all over. Nani huyo, toka hapo, rundi, utanguka. Frustrated. And I didn't actually tell the teacher why I had gone. I just said, Mwalimu, I'm just come to see how you guys are faring on. Uh, I said, I think you need an assistant teacher. Can you yeah, maybe you propose to the principal's office. I went and I proposed. But before those implementations were done, I decided I would rather take my child where there are 25 in a class and there is an assistant teacher. That way, he knew how to count and write without me going to quarrel the teacher. But what are we saying? You can feel already those emotions, eh? And you have been there. In spite of all these things that are not right, your child comes home, doesn't know how to read or write. Show them acceptance and affection. One day they will know how to read and write. And you don't have to quarrel. Number three, loving all through. You need to love your children all through. Being a mom is a lifelong vocation. When they are born, you are on duty, you have to breastfeed them. When they finish breastfeeding, they are now in a stage we call, and uh, there is a slide there, number C. Okay, you can't see them right there. But boys and girls have different needs at different stages. I won't explain to you. I will quickly tell you. If you, I don't know how many of you have ever done a program by Simon and Sophie Bevy called Intentional Mom, being an intentional mom. I want to encourage you. It's an online program. I did it. It takes like six weeks. You get a program on how to be an intentional mom. And they say that the strategies for parenting boys are different from girls. And their parents here are saying, I don't know what's wrong with my boys. It's nothing wrong with them. They are just boys. What's up with my girl? She's ever emotional and crying. It's nothing wrong. She's just being a girl. And there's also nothing wrong with you as a mom. You have just not understood the differences. So, for example, you have to love your children all the way throughout. If they are at the explorer stage, boys at two to four years, they are called explorers. They jump all over, they climb everywhere. One mother told me how she found her son was kunakaraya mafuta hapa chini ya kupika mandazi. Alafu mutoto wako pale juu, there was something ame climb up oh. So she figured out, if I shout, utaanguka, ataanguka kwa nini? Aya. So she had to pretend and be very calm and say, hey, hi, Papa, come, come, come. Take the child, put her down. That time you can't start quarreling the house girl. Like, unapika mandazi yapo mtoto wakiwa anju, anayizanguka kwa yomofuta. So she was calm, she took the child, and then now sorted out the rest issue. Because the explorer, even if you tell him, mafuta ya nachoma na ajui, hata elewa. If a child tells you, can I cook, and they are two to four years, tell them, it's okay, you want to touch the sufuria? By the way, they won't die of being burnt a little. Let them touch. <laughs> the body will react, then they will never ask you if I can touch again. If you refuse, they will try to touch it when you are not there. Then things will pour on them, and you will take them to hospital for six to seven months. 
to and you will pay the bills. <laughs> Just allow them. They are exploring. They want to understand, isn't it? When now they reach what we call five to and they break hands and limbs. I was telling my friend there when you were coming, my two sons, they broke their hands. One broke the leg, the other one fractured the, 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 the hand, the other one the leg. And one was four years, the other one was just like uh, getting to two years. I took them to hospital. The doctor told me, don't be worried. Another one came here, I was treating him for the fifth fracture. Fifth. That's why you have just come here for the first time and you are saying, Ataponalini, oh, it's very serious. Nothing serious. Within one month, he was okay and he jumping again. So the next, after two months, he jumped again and cut his ear. It almost fell off. I went back to the same doctor. I said, I relax. Everything is fine with the boy. Don't even kill him. Just give him some. Tell him, remind him. Do you know what happened to your ear the other time you jumped? <gasps> and you will remember and not jump again. At five to eight, they are lovers. Now they are starting to understand emotions. You see? exploring. He wants to know what's happening. Okay? There's nothing wrong with them. He's just being fine. Are we together? So five to eight years, they start to understand emotions. They start to see mom is not happy. Have you ever had your child asking you, hey mom, why don't you look happy? That time you have been overworked at work, you have maybe an issue with your spouse, you're feeling so frustrated and then the child has realized and you wonder, I, how did he know? They are starting to realize and feel emotions. Then 9 to 12, we call them the individual. They are starting now to realize they are growing in their space, and they are starting to realize that they have a personality, and there are things that they can do. Those are the preteens. Then when they become teenagers, the mothers who are here, we call them the wanderers, wander, wandering in the desert. The children of Israel, for how many years? <laughs> and they are just going around the same place, 40, until God said you have to break camp and move. Isn't it? That is what teenagers do. He woke up at 7. He has been on TV up to 6 p.m. Aja ogre, not showered, not eaten, not done homework. He is just a wanderer moving around the mountain of TV, watching the series. I saw another one who told me, I have watched for 36 hours, continuous. Thank God my mom and dad traveled up country. That and I was asking, you are not sleeping, you are not dozing. That is six hours. I'm so happy. You know, I do trainings with teenagers. I asked them, how long do you watch TV over the holidays? Because I've done, there's a student, I supervised a PhD study in 2019. And we saw the issues around TV. And please, switch off the TV in your house. Let it not be on for more than one hour a day. When it's during the holiday, make it two hours. That is how Ben Carson became the greatest neurosurgeon in the world. And they choose the program you want them to watch. If they riot, that is your house, that is your TV, sell it. Because you also don't, I don't think you can die if you don't watch TV. I teach journalism. I have watched TV twice this year from January. I am a media person. I know what it can do to me and my household. I don't switch it on, it's there. I bought it, but I don't have to watch it. That's another lesson for another day. Now, these teenagers, when I ask them, how often do you watch TV? They said, anytime I am not asleep. Anytime I am not asleep. And what time do you sleep? 4 a.m. over the holidays. What time does mom and dad sleep? Ah, by 10, wamechoka. That is the time we watch our favorite programs. So we sleep at 4 a.m. or 6 a.m. Tunakutananga kwa mlango, wakienda job, tunaingia bedroom. Do these things happen in your houses? Aha. Now you know. Because you have people who are wandering. They are wanderers. And then finally when they mature, they become the warriors. Then girls, they go through stages we call security, exploring people's skills, fighting hustle, and stepping into adulthood. And I have no time to explain that, but uh, I know <laughs> maybe another chance will come another day. I need to finish up. Let me just speak about the final one very quickly. Have a goal of parenting. Do what? When you are parenting your children, you need to have a goal. And the main goal in parenting is to develop good character traits in your children. Let me tell you, you are not here to bring the best CEO in Africa in the next 20 years. When that child you are breastfeeding grows up, the world doesn't need the best 
musician. Because your girl has a talent of singing, you're thinking, you're training her, she's going to all the music schools, you are putting her on that TV show because you want the best musician out of her. No. Why am I saying this? What sustains a person at the top in their career or in their profession when they grow up is character. Have you heard of CEOs who have been sacked because they were found in the wrong place? You have heard even CSEs and ministers who have been told, please excuse us, we want to do investigations. Have you heard of athletes who have died at 25 years because of promiscuity, sexual, having like 10 girlfriends at the same time? Therefore, what we are developing is character, not CEOs and great musicians and sportsmen, not KCSC in grade A. In fact, in another school, I went to one parent, was very happy, and she said, I don't want an A without character. I would rather have a C, but with character. You can have an A who is a drug addict because of lack of character. You are a Mpeleka Wapi? No, we are much. In fact, I know of one engineer, but because of drugs and alcoholism, he now does a kibarua for 20 bob, 200 shillings a day because of lack of character. As we conclude, and I'm feeling like I've really rushed you people. I wish I could have delivered better than this, but we shall come back another day. There are four parenting styles. You can adopt one of them, but uh, I think I'll send a video clip and you can um, to, to go through that. I have how many minutes now? Time is up, right? Yes, so let me finish with this uh, two, two, three things. Huh? Two things, just reading sentences through. Conclusion. Parenting is investing in your legacy. What will live after you? Many generations. Are we together? So take your time and spend time because you're investing on your legacy. And then, for you to be a great mother, you also have to take care of yourself. If you have stress, you are not healthy mentally. You are not happy yourself. You can't expect your children to be healthy and happy. You cannot give out what you don't have. So take enough rest, eat well, do physical exercises. Have a purposeful thing you are pursuing in life. That way, even children will be able to pursue their studies well, have purpose and meaning in life, because they will be able to mimic you and mirror you. For we say, life is caught. It is not taught. Tuko pamoja. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate. Hope to see you another day. Asante sana. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I think this has been a very amazing uh, seminar. And uh, it's most unfortunate because we are really short of time. We have taken the voice training. Like, we have taken 12 minutes. Yeah, so uh, we would love to appreciate our speakers better. I think I've learned how Susan does the, the appreciation. I will not call her to do that because she was one of our speakers. But I know she says, Kuna Moi, the clapping, you do three times. There is digital, you do three times. And there is Bunge. I think I've gotten right. Yeah. So we are going to do that in, uh, in, in a gist of appreciating our speakers so let us do that and after we are done with that we will not have qa because we have really taken our time on the qa i'll invite our chair lady to give final remarks and also uh we'll we'll have our word of prayer so we appreciate our speakers we do bunge digital i mean we do nyayo digital and bunge so we start we do three nyayo nyayo Digital, digital, bunge, bunge. Thank you so, so much. Welcome, our dear lady. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you happy? Excited? Have you learned something? I'm happy too and excited. Uh, today we've learned so many things. It is a changeover for me. Personally, I've learned so many things. And um, I think from here today onwards, we will spend more time with our children and we will love them more unconditionally. Whether they have done wrong or they have done good, right? So thank you so much um, for your time, for your coming, and uh, for spending time to listen to our 
guest speaker, Dr. Haida. We are so happy. You've really transformed our style of parenting. It is not an easy topic, but with God and with, with God's uh, guidance and wisdom, it is all possible, right? Thank you, my, my sister, for accompanying our speaker today to come and say something for us. I won't forget to say thank you, Lisa, for the effort that you did to organize this. May God bless you and all those who are involved. May you be blessed as you go home. Please, take something home. Love your children more. Spend more time with them. Learn to tell them the consequences. What they choose, there's a consequence, right? Have we learned something? Do we, have, um, do we need to call them again to come and share with us? So thank you so much, my sister. I think when you are sharing your experience, I almost said that is my, my almost sister. We share so much. But above all, we say thank you to God for making it possible for us to be here today. So as you go home, there's something small we'll share as we go. I do not have to say much because much has been said so that I don't spoil what has been said. So may God bless you as you go out and may you practice what we have learned today. It is so amazing, so amazing. So may, may you be blessed to say hi to your family, your hubby, your children, and your church, Deliverance Church, Langata. So send uh, greetings to them. Uh, I request Mary Kanuku to pray for us as we leave. We have no time. We've really spent a lot of time. Before we, we Mary prays, uh, our speaker has two books. One is about the career. And the other one is about uh, smart love skills for teenagers. So if you, if you would wish to have one, it's only going for 200 per book. So if you want, you can see her or me. Thank you, Mary Karibu. Good evening, everybody. Is it good evening or good afternoon? <laughs> good afternoon. I think we've enjoyed. I won't say a word. I will just ask that we stand and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we humble ourselves before you this afternoon. We want to thank you for visiting us in the morning and in the afternoon. We want to thank you for the speakers that have spoken your word in the morning and also for Dr. Tari and uh, Susan who have talked to us about our parenting skills. We want to bless your holy name because, Father, you have instructed into us children, young ones, teenagers, and even those who are the colleges and the university that father will be mothers and will be uh, good parents to them. We want to ask you this afternoon as we leave that father that which we have learned that we will carry home and that we will practice. And father above all, because you have loved us and conditionally that we will love our children unconditionally. We want to ask you this evening as we go home that in the that you walk with us be with us, that you instruct us in righteousness and that you help us to apply that which we have learned in your house this morning and in this afternoon. Father, may you bless us, may you be with us, may you cover us with your love and your blessing. May we feel your nearness that when we get uh, anxious, frustrated, we know that you are there always with us and that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Be with us and escort us with your love and uh, give us that which we are not able to itemize. Let your Holy Spirit continue to intercede for us that which we have learned in the morning, Heavenly Father. Be guide us in all things and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. We wish you I've been so excited to be at the new apostolic church today. I'm uh, Dr. Aida Mwenda. I was here on behalf of Excel Communications Consultancy to talk to the moms about uh, parenting. Parenting is a responsibility given from God. And what has amazed me today the most is the anger in the moms here to just know more how to 
parent their children better, knowing that their responsibility is to love them and to bring the best out of these children because they are not to their homes. But a great generation that is going to live, you know, to, to bring out their legacy. Well, as a mother, one of the greatest things that you do, even as a family, as is that you are up to uh, leave a legacy in this world so that long after you're gone then generations and generations to come can have values and character that are anchored in the word of God and that can cause this side uh, people that are very young uh, but when they grow up they will be uh, society transformers and to have people that can we do that by having right parental strategies. So to, you, to just be present. Everything. So we are saying be intentional. Not delegate parenting. And uh, the sin is a uh, sure sign that the Lord is about to do great and amazing things in this congregation and behold. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, first, I'm so happy uh, that we came up with this meeting, this seminar. It has been very, uh, the impact is felt and it's like I've uh, just started uh, uh, being a parent because uh, then I didn't, uh, I didn't get the the right way the, or the right skills to do the parenting but i would say this one has uh, has changed my mentality even the way i'll be doing things i uh, plan to learn more because she has given us the books and uh, the pre her presentations so i plan to go through them again and uh, unfortunately the time was not really enough but all you know we thank god because of what uh because of him providing this day and this session. So personally for the meeting, I loved it. I'm looking forward for many more like these ones. And I'm so thankful for the church and the CFA committee and the leadership for planning to start this and specifically picking this uh, topic. Thank you. So what is your view on the CFA meeting on parenting today? Well, actually it was a nice session. We really enjoyed and I think we should have more of this because um, some of us take parenting as, a, as an easy thing. But having, having that meeting, it has come out that it's not that easy. Sometimes we might need uh, some guidance on how to go about things. So I think it's a good thing and we should do it more often. So that we get more used to it and we find that uh, by doing so, the parenting will be much easier for every parent. So what is your view on the CIFA meeting uh, that has happened this afternoon? Okay, it was so positive because uh, it mentioned so much about the love, how as parents we tend to, to leave the children, especially with the care of uh, maybe a helper or, some, or maybe a house help. And then they tend to learn things we do not teach them. So even if as parents we instill them, it becomes a quite um, impossible. And then the, the teenagers, how to when we talk about teenagers, they tend to be to want to be responsible. They want to learn their own things. They want to start developing their own uh, plans. But us, we want to remain still parents, and we push them. So we we have been told. Let, let them give them at least maybe a time to at least to make some decisions. Then from there, when they make their decisions now, we can pick from there. We can be able to know what they've decided. But not we should not always say, say no. Because a no, a no is a, when you say to your child, you give your child a no every time. Sometimes they want to say, to try, why no every time? So at least... If there's something they want to do, or maybe they want to go sleep over, or they want to go uh, uh, sleep over for a party or a birthday, let us not say no. Let us uh, learn where they are going to go. Let us ensure wherever they are going to go, 
we know the parents we we we've been we've been uh, we visited the place we've we visited the home and then we asked them questions where you are going as this have we ever been to this place have we ever met the parents have we ever interacted with this family then automatically it will become a no but now from what point from what view yeah thank you thank you uh, what i and the experience of the afternoon meeting i've just had had um the afternoon session the training on parenting was quite amazing i've learned quite a number of things and i believe that uh, from from now hence for them i'm going to be a better parent because of the insights i've got yes okay i am excited and happy uh, because what i have expected in that um, seminar has already changed my approach in the way i do my parenting uh, because uh, for one the way we do parenting in this digital era is not the way our parents did it did it in the analog era that is we need to change the style and that has been achieved so i'm excited and happy for one one thing that we have learned is that um, our children only need love from us we can do everything else we can provide we can guide but the only thing that they require from us is love and uh, also intentional um we need also to be intentional when we are spending time with them because they need our presence just as god is present present for uh, with us all the time and always we also need to be intentional create time to be with our children so the training was enriching and uh, i'm happy as the leader of the sisters union that today we've really been transformed and the way we do the parenting has changed the perspective has changed to a different angle so we are happy for the guest speaker she has really changed our mindset thank you thank you